Well, we finally have some more information about Sony's Project Q handheld, including the price, and it isn't as bad as many people thought it could be. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, and let's take a look at the headline from the article here at blog.playstation.com. PlayStation's first remote play dedicated device, PlayStation Portal Remote Player to launch later this year at $199.99. Now, they call this thing the PlayStation Portal Remote Player, so yeah, I'm not going to mess up at all and call it the PlayStation Portable instead of the PlayStation Portal. Not at all. But since the official name seems to be the PlayStation Portal Remote Player, can we just shorten it to the PSPRP? And I think one of the big hooks here for this device is that it does feature the DualSense wireless controllers features. So that includes the adaptive triggers and the haptic feedback. As awkward as this does look, it does make sense far as getting the same experience. Now the system has an 8 inch LCD screen that's capable of 1080p resolution at 60fps which is what I would expect for a handheld like this. And there's not much reason to put 4K on an 8 inch screen plus it kind of reduces the amount of bandwidth needed. Now we don't have any information yet about the rest of the specs whether it supports HDR but I'm sure we'll find that out shortly. And for audio, it does have a 3.5mm audio jack for wired audio, which is good to see that. Even my cell phone doesn't have that anymore. However, there is no Bluetooth. Now, you can buy their new PlayStation Link compatible headsets, and we'll get into those in a minute. But that's kind of a bummer that you can't pair any Bluetooth headsets with it. Now the way the device works is that it will connect remotely to your PlayStation 5 over Wi-Fi or their proprietary connection called PlayStation Link. Now PlayStation Link has its own dongle and is supposed to provide a lower latency link, but it won't let you move as far away from the PlayStation 5 as you would if you were, say, on Wi-Fi. But if you do need to play remotely from across the house, you can just switch over and use Wi-Fi instead. Now I'm guessing this PlayStation Link feature probably uses some type of 5 gigahertz radio dongle with Sony's own wireless protocol stack on top of it. But I'm sure once it gets released, there'll be somebody that has a technical breakdown of this. Now because the system streams from the PlayStation 5, you won't be able to stream games from your PlayStation Plus Premium account. Only games that are installed to the PlayStation 5 are playable. Which is a bit of a shame, since this is a streaming device, it seems like it shouldn't matter what the source of the stream is, but maybe they might add that feature in a future update if there's enough demand, but I wouldn't count on it. Also, in case you were wondering, you can't hook up the PlayStation VR 2 to this and play, so no PlayStation VR 2 support with this, which is understandable. And the system is completely dependent on access to a PlayStation 5. There's no other apps on it, so unless hackers kind of crack this thing open, it's pretty much a paperweight without a PlayStation 5 to connect to. Also, we don't know anything about the battery life. I did see a preview from IGN that said Sony hadn't finalized the battery specs yet, but they are targeting the same battery life as the DualSense controllers. And I think if they reach that with a handheld, that's not too bad. Now, as the headline said, it is set to launch later this year for $199.99 and pre-orders will begin soon. Now, before I give you my thoughts about this, they also announced two other devices that will use this PlayStation Link connection. And that's the Pulse Elite wireless headset and the Pulse Explore wireless earbuds. Now both of these are boosting lossless audio and AI enhanced noise rejection capable of filtering out background noises. And the Pulse Elite wireless headset has a retractable boom mic and a charging hanger and it retails for $149.99. And the Pulse Explorer wireless earbuds have dual microphones, so one for each ear, 
and it comes with a charging case. Now this retails for $199.99, so the earbuds cost as much as the PlayStation Portable, I mean the PlayStation Portal. Now these devices aren't on sale yet, but pre-orders should be announced soon. So overall, I'm not really disappointed with the PlayStation Portal. It seems like it's priced right for what it does, and it's still cheaper than some of these other streaming portable devices. I think you have a big plus with that Frankenstein looking controllers attached to the side. Even though it looks odd, it does seem to be the best way to play PlayStation games portably. But I do find it kind of disappointing that they don't have Bluetooth audio options on this. That seems like that should just be a given today. But with that 3.5mm jack, you could technically purchase an adapter if it can power off of a battery or maybe power off the USB-C port. I've used these kind of things back in the Switch's days before it upgraded and added support to allow Bluetooth headsets. And since Bluetooth basically uses the same radio that Wi-Fi does, there is a possibility they could provide a firmware update at a later date to provide Bluetooth support. Now personally for me, this is not something I'm looking to pick up. I have a dedicated gaming setup with a TV and it's on space, so I don't really have to share that space with anyone else. But if your situation's different and you don't always have access to the TV where your PlayStation 5 is connected, this might be worth it to you. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. Is this something you would look to pick up? Because maybe you share a TV with somebody or maybe you just want to finish a game while going to bed, although it seems like that would wake you up. And you think maybe this system could eventually get hacked and maybe become a lot more useful and maybe just running playing Android on and might be a decent handheld emulator device. Drop your comment below and let me know your thoughts. And if you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, consider doing so. It really does help the channel out quite a bit. I want to thank you for watching and be good.